Let's actually pay a closer, closer attention to the, what the first card is doing. The first card started over here, and it's in the first position, right? Starting from, we're starting counting from zero, okay? So, the, so this is in position one. Now it goes over here. So if I look at where it is now, it's in position two. Right? So let me put a two here. Now let's follow it over here, and you see now, it's in position four. Now I follow it one more step, it comes down here. And you see now it's in position eight. I guess you start seeing a pattern, right? So each time the position is just doubling. According to this, the next position should be 16. But, well, that's a problem because we don't have 16 positions. But you see what I have to do is just count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then wrap around 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So you see what, what I'm doing is that I'm just counting uh, and when I'm done, I wrap around. This is a lot like the hours in a clock. So imagine that a day only had nine hours. So there's the zero, there's three o'clock, there's six o'clock, okay. It's one, two, seven, eight. And then after nine hours, you reset and come back to zero. Okay, so whenever you get to nine, you reset to zero. So if I need to go to 16, well, 16 is, is like one nine hour day plus seven hours. And so that's why here I land in position seven. We double again. Each time we just double the position. So seven times two is 14. Again, well that's... So you double the seven, not the 16. Actually, you could double the 16 also if, if you wanted. Maybe you, you can do it at home. Double the 16 and you'll see that you get the same result. I want to be in position 14, but again, that's like nine positions and a leftover of five. So if I did this correctly, then I should land in position five. Five, okay? And finally, five times two is 10, so I'm in position 10. Well, again, 10 is a full spin around the clock or around the shovel, and there's one left over. And so I end up at one. And so you see, it's one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, right? That's, so I could have just done one, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, right? And, and the point is the 64 is two to the six, right? If I take six shuffles and I double each time, then the first card should be in position 64. And really the key to this trick, it all comes down to this, is that 64 is going how many times around the clock? I guess we go seven times around the clock. Right? So seven times around the clock of nine hours, right? that's 63. And the leftover is one. Okay? So in this in this world where days are nine hours long, 64 is the same number as one, okay? And that means that if you double six times, then you're multiplying by 64, which is the same thing as multiplying by one. And this happens with card number one, and it happens with every single card, actually. If you look at where every, sing every single card is going, it's just doubling each time. And so after six times, uh, you're back at where you started. I did it with 10 cards, but only because that's what I can handle in my hands. But what about if you wanted to do a trick with 52 cards? How many sh perfect shuffles of 52 cards would it take to come back to the beginning, right? I think that's a better question. And now, actually, we're ready to answer that question very easily. So this is if we had 10 cards. We're going to do the same thing as before, except that now we have to change the clock. In this world, days are not nine hours long. They're 51 hours long, right? Here you had 10 cards and the clock had nine hours. If you have 52 cards, then you have to recycle every 51. Here's zero. Here's one, here's two, etc. But all we have to remember is that whenever you get to 51, you reset to zero. Let's follow the, the track of the one. We saw this pattern and now we, we don't need to even draw this picture. We can just say, okay, the, the card starts at position one. After one shuffle, it doubles, so it goes to two. After another, after another shuffle, it goes to four. It keeps doubling each time. So third shuffle goes to eight. Fourth shuffle goes to 16, 
fifth shuffle goes to 32. Now here we have to be a little bit careful, right? Because for the sixth shuffle, we get to 64, right? Well, 64 is going, you know, once around the clock of 51 hours. And 64 minus 51 is 13. And so now, after 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 shuffles, card 1 is in position 13. Let's do it again. So 13 times 2 is 26. I, I basically need, needed to come back to 1, right? Because I'm basically following the card 1 around, and I need to know when it's going to come back to the, to the position 1. So I need to keep playing this game until I see the number 1. So we're at 26. It's been 7 shuffles. In the 8th shuffle, we get 26 times 2 is 52 which I meant to write down here, <laughs> uh, 52 is, you know, one spin around the clock plus one hour. Okay, so this actually is one. It's there, it's back. That's it, yeah. And so what, what you find is that actually just after eight perfect shuffles of a deck of 52 cards, not only is, is the card one in the right position, but if you do this for any card, you're going to find that they're all in the right position. How do we know it works for all of them? Like, card one has returned to where it started. How do we know all the other cards? Uh -huh. How do we know the other cards haven't gone off on their own adventures and they're still somewhere else in the deck? So, the, yeah, that's a really good question. And we even saw that here, right? So if we go back to what happened to card three in, in our previous example, card three was doing something different from what card one was doing. But let's see that it's actually not so different. So if we start with card three, um, so it starts in position three. Let me do it in red. Again, after one shuffle, card three goes to position six. Right? So it's still doubling. It's still the same, the same rule of doubling holds for every card. Uh, and now after, after another shuffle, it's going to multiply times two, which is 12, right? Yeah. But here, 12 is 9 plus 3, okay, and so we go back to 3, okay? And so here we see why after two steps we get 3, 6, 3, 6, 3, just because that's what is, is going on here. So even the ones that followed a different path, a different shaped path, mm -hmm. followed the rule of doubling. And, and not only that, but because the first one follows, starts at 1 and ends at 1, now if you want the positions of, of the card 3, you just have to take the positions of the card 1 and triple them. Here you go, 1 times 2 is 3, 2 times 3 is 6, 4 times 3 is 12. You're just multiplying by 3, and after 8 shuffles, card 1 is in position 1. You multiply by 3, you see that card 3 is in position 3. And the same argument goes for any card. I find it really amazing that uh, after only 8 shuffles, um, all the cards going back to the beginning. Actually, if somebody learns how to do this, I would love to see it if you, you know, if, if, uh, if somebody can learn how to really do a perfect shuffle eight times and get it back to the beginning, that would be something to see. That would be a really good trick. So here I'm just shuffling all the 52 cards, okay? Not and, uh, perfectly. Not, not very well at all. Just some, any, any shuffle, right? Just shuffling a few times. Um, you see, my perfect shuffles were more graceful than my real shuffles. <laughs> here we're seeing a lot of structure in shuffling. And at the same time, I don't know if you would believe this, Brady, but I could, I didn't mean to have the joker in there, not that, not that it matters too much. Uh, I can almost guarantee to you that a deck of cards has never been in this order in the history of humanity. Why is that? Well, how many different orders are there? The first card could be any, any one of the 52 cards. Now, the second card could be any card except for whichever one you just took out, the Queen of, Heart, the Queen of Diamonds, right? So that one could be any of 51 cards. The next one could be any other card except the Queen of Diamonds and the Four of Spades, is that what these are called? So, you know, 50 options for those. And so the, no the, number of, you know, the number of possible orders of a deck of cards, of a real deck of cards, is this. You know, you just multiply all the numbers from 1 to 52. Mathematicians like to call this 52 amazing. 52 factorial. It's a really big number. So, you know, if, if, you, if you feed it to a calculator or a computer, you're going to find that this number is approximately 8 times 10 to the 67. 1, 8, and then 67 zeros. 
So that's just like a massively, massively huge number. So to put it into perspective, uh, how many people are there in the world? Like six billion? Let's say, let's be general. Let's say 10 billion. Okay. So the number of people in the world is approximately 10 billion. Now I have to tell you, Brady, this always confuses me because billion is different in English and in Spanish. But in English, billion is a thousand millions, right? And so this is only 10 zeros, okay? And so imagine if, if every person was playing cards all the time, nonstop for their whole lives, this wouldn't even come close to the number of, of possibilities, okay? And so, I mean, this is something that's, that's a little, uh, I think this is really interesting that, you know, even though we think of this as a very finite thing, we're used to playing with cards, and yet, you know, it's, it's almost for practical purposes infinite. I mean, that, you know, that we're, we're not, never going to be able to see all the possibilities. And I always feel like a, a lot of the reason that people like to play cards is that they like to find structure in things that are very complicated, and this is a really good example of that. When you showed me this here, you said, isn't it great that there is, there's even structure to a shuffle? But I would argue that means you haven't done a shuffle. That thing that you call a perfect shuffle mm -hmm. is in fact not a shuffle, is it? It's just a, there is no random element to it. It's very predetermined. So the cards haven't been shuffled. I think, you're, I think you're absolutely right. I, I, you know, we call it a shuffle because I guess we don't have a better word for it. But, but I agree with you. This is not random at all. And, uh, and what we're seeing here is just a, a very small part of the possibilities that has a lot of pattern. But I guess, I guess it goes to that, like the universe of shuffles is so huge that we have to content ourselves with understanding a little piece that has structure. That's the trick. If you shuffle fewer times, if you shuffle five or six times, uh, it, it really, uh, somebody can really make money against you in, in a card guessing experiment. If you shuffle, you know, 10 or 11 times, it's not worth the wear and tear on your shoe leather standing there in the casino if you're counting cards. It's just as close to random as it could be.